Hello Info220 students. This is a video that's going to allow you to have some extra skills test practice um, for your access exam <coughs> that's coming up. Um, so I have a list of instructions that I'm going to download. So what we're going to be doing in this um, practice skills test is um, a series of things um, similar to what you're going to be asked to do on the test, although these are um, actually going to be related to one another. So we're making like a comprehensive system in the on the skills test because um, I don't want you to have to get one question correct in order to attempt the next. Um, the questions will be similar, but they won't be um, sequential the way these are. Um, so in this, I. Um, I made up a little scenario. So we have this existing database that has books and sales, and we're going to um, pretend that we want to add some functionality to it to enable um, them to track commissions. So we're going to create a new table to track some employee information, and then we're going to modify and add different functionality um, in order to add that to the existing database. Um, so let's download the file, the access file. And I'm going to open this and um, do each step. So the first step in the instructions is going to be to create a new table, employee sales, that has employee ID, last name, first name, and commission rate. Um, the commission rate is going to have a validation rule that it has to be less than 0.1 and then we'll set the employee ID as the primary key. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So we're going to create a table and design view. I'm going to have a field name employee ID and employee IDs, um, as you know, are, are numeric. Um, they could be specified as either a text field or a numeric field. Um, I'll just call it a number, and we'll leave it as a long integer. Um, this is going to be our primary key, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then we'll have a last name, which is a text field, but we don't want to leave it as 255 spaces. We want to shrink that down to a more manageable size so it doesn't take up some of the space either on screens or forms or um, even the data itself doesn't have to be that large. Then I'll have a first name that's going to be the same type, a text short text, 30 spaces, and then finally we'll have the commission Or do I call it commission rate? I'm not sure what commission rate. And that's going to be a numeric field also. But this time, rather than integer, if we left it at long integer, this system wouldn't work because we're, we're trying to um, enter a percentage, like uh, how much they're what percentage they're going to get of the final sale. So if a book sells for $100 and they get 5% commission, they would earn $5 from that sale. So we need to change this from integer, which is a whole number, to something that accommodates decimals. And I'm going to choose the double format. And I'm going to add my validation rule, less than 0.1. And I'll put some text with it. Um, Please enter a commission rate less than 10%. Okay, so we'll close this table and confirm that we want to change the set, change the design. And now rather than leave it table one, I'm going to call it employee, what is it, employee commissions employee sales.
Okay, so now that we've added that, we need to integrate it with the existing database. So there's this table called order lines that um, occurs every time you have a sale. So in order to track which employees made the sale, we have to include the employee ID in that table. So I'm going to go into the order lines table and go into design view and I'm going to add employee ID to the bottom of the table. And I have to make sure I store it in exactly the same format as I did in the employee sales table. So we um, define that as a number with a long integer field size. So I'm going to close and save. And now just because I have the employee ID in both tables doesn't mean that Access knows that they're related to one another. So I need to go into the database and the relationships. And currently the uh, employee sales table is not shown. So these are the existing relationships. So I'm going to click on this menu option called Show Table and I'm going to show the employee sales table. I'm just going to add it to the list and then I'm going to close. And now this is the connection that we want to make. Employee ID in the sale, employee sales table with the employee ID in the order lines table. So I click on the employee ID field using kind of the tip of the, of the arrow and I'm going to keep my mouse button held down and drag over until the tip of the arrow is pointed at the employee ID in the order lines table. When I release my mouse, it's, it confirms that I want to create a relationship between the employee sales table and the order lines table using the employee ID field. You want to look at this pop-up window to make sure it's pretty easy to have your mouse be like slightly off and pick the wrong field. Um, so I'm going to select Create to confirm the relationship. And now visually we see an arrow between the two um, tables. So I'm going to close the screen and it will confirm that I want to save. Okay, the next step is we want to add um, a data entry form for the employee sales. Um, for this one, I'm just going to go to Create and then Form Wizard. And I'm going to select all the fields in the Employee Sales table. And let's see what kind of options we want to do. It doesn't really tell you. Um, the columnar format just shows one record at a time. I'm going to go to the tabular format and I'm going to go ahead and click finish and I'm going to enter a couple employees. So 1111, I think we'll do the Beatles, Harrison, George, and now I'm going to test my um, my validation rule for the commission rates. I'm putting um, 55 cents in, 55%, and it says that it has to be less than 0.1, so I'm going to change it to 0.5. I'm sorry, 0.05. And I'll add um, Ringo Starr. We'll give him 0 0.04, 333, Paul McCartney, and I'll give him 0 0.08, 444, 4, John Lennon, and we'll also give him 0 0.08. So now I'm going to close. It didn't ask me to save because that was just data entry. Um, you only have to save when you make a design change to a table. Um, 
I'm going to go into this order lines and just double click. I'm not going to create a form for it, um, but you can see the existing sales and now we have employee ID as one of the fields. So I'm going to go into that column and enter some of the, whoops, some of the employee IDs that I just had there. Okay, so um, we don't have to go through exhaustively and add the employee ID to every single um, record, but we needed some data out there in order to um, get results for our steps that are coming up. So we've assigned employees to some of the existing orders that have taken place. Okay, so we're on to the next step, which would be to create the query. And I've got a, a few different queries here showing kind of a spectrum of different um, things that you could do once you have some data. So the first one is just to show um, who made what sales. So we're going to include the employee ID, last name, and first name from the employee sales table in all of the order lines fields. So I'm going to go into Query Wizard. And I'm going to go to Employee Sales. I could just pick everything from both tables. Um, and we'll, um, what do we want to name this? It doesn't say what to name the query, but we're going to call this um, employee sales. So we get the results and we see this is the commission rate for each of these orders. So now we want to go to the next query. And we want to show the average cost of each of the sales. So we're going um, we're going to pick start it the same way where we're going to go into the query wizard. And I'm going to go into the employee sales and show their last name and first name and pick employee ID also. And then we're going to um, choose cost each from the order lines table. And then for now we're just going to finish. So this is going to be average cost by employee. So how much are they selling? Are some employees selling higher priced items than others? So I'm going to uh, click finish. And then we're going to have to modify this in design view. So I'm going to go to design view. And this is one of our totals queries. So I'm going to click the totals button. And um, I'm going to leave these three fields as grouped by. There's only one numeric field. That's the cost field. And I'm going to change that to an average and then rerun. And you can see that for the employees, they all average around $20 to $24 per sale. And I'm going to close and save. Our next query It's going to show unshipped orders. So imagine that um, employees have to um, 
be accountable for shipping the the orders that come in that are assigned to them. So we're going to choose employee ID, last name and first name from the first table and and order number and ISBN and the shipped field from the uh, from the other table. So I'm going to start off the same way where I'm going to go into the wizard. Have to go back to the employee sales. Oops. And uh, then I have to go to the order lines table again. And select the ISBN. And shipped. Um, let me order, put these. We can shift things around a little bit. I don't know how I got those in the middle. Makes sense to put quantity too. Let's see, we'd have to know how many um, books to grab. But anyway, we're uh, we get through the wizard. And I'm going to call this um, employee orders um, not shipped or something. So these are the uh, all of the orders, but there's only one that uh, has shipped equal to n. That's going to be these. So we want to modify the query to show shipped equal to n. So I'm going to go into design view here and in shipped I'm going to add a criteria where the shipped is equal to n. And if I didn't want to show the, that field I could just uncheck it. So now we only get the orders that are equal to n. So there must have been this one as well. Okay, so I close out of this and save the changes and we go on to the next query. So we're almost through, we're at number nine. Um, this is a lookup where they're looking up the last name or this is a, actually a flexible look up. It's kind of a complicated query because it's got um, two parameters. They could either um, look up a last name or look up an employee ID. So we're going to select um, the employee, employee ID and order lines data again. So I'm going to create a query using the wizard. Go back to the employee sales and enter employee ID, last name and first name. And then from the order lines, I'm picking all of the fields. We don't really need the order employee ID. Whoops. I messed that up. Let me start over again. I'm going to um, go to the employee sales. Try again, employee sales. And I'm going to select employee ID, last name, first name. And then I'm going to go to the order lines. And I'm going to select everything except I'm going to send back the employee ID field because we already have that up here. So I'm going to do next and then finish. I'm going to call this lookup employee order and finish and it shows all the data but we want to allow them to look up either by last name or by employee ID. Um, so I need to modify this in design view. And this is going to be a parameter query so um, I'm going to put in brackets and that's next to the P on my keyboard. Enter employee ID 
and then um, I want to allow them to have either one or the other so I'm going to type enter employee last name So they can, uh, they're going to get both pop-up windows um, when we, they're going to get two different pop-up windows, but they're going to be able to enter either. And um, when it runs, so I'm going to close and save, and then I'm going to test this by running it again. So I'm double clicking on it. Um, let's say I skip the, I don't know the employee ID number, so I'm just going to click OK and leave it blank. But I know that um, the last name was Star. Whoops, um, maybe I entered that incorrectly. So I'm going to run it again, leave that blank. I might have just put one R. So there it is, Ringo Star. I think he has two R's in his last name. But um, I could run it again. Let's say this time I do know the employee ID. and we get the employee ID 111. Okay, so that's a parameter query. So now we want a calculated field, and this is actually the most important one because we ha we've been collecting commission, but we haven't been integrating it with the orders. Um, So this query um, actually is going to show things from three different tables. Um, so I'm going to go to the wizard and from the employee sales table I'll select everything. We don't actually need the commission rate, but I'm going to leave it in there for the time being. I'm, I'm going to go back and delete it later. Um, and then we need the order number and cost each and quantity and ISBN from the order lines. Order number, ISBN, quantity, and cost each. And then from the book table, we're going to select the title. OK, so let's just go ahead and finish this one. Um, we're going to call it employee commissions. So now we can see each sale for each employee, um, how many of a particular book did they sell, how much did it cost, and what was the name of the book. But we want to add a new calculated field that multiplies the quantity by the cost by the commission to see how much money we would owe them for that particular um, sale. So now we're going to go in and add a field named commission that's commission rate times cost each times quantity. So let's go into design view and over here where we have a blank column I'm going to expand that to make it a little wider So I'm going to type the word commission, that's the name of the field, and then a colon. That separates the name of the field from the equation. So that's going to be commission rate, and I have to be very careful about my typing here, times cost each, which has an underscore in it, times quantity. Now I can run it again and kind of spot check it. Um, this one's kind of a easier 5%. So they sold two books at $19.95. That's roughly $40 worth of sales. 
5% is 40 is about $2 and 1.995 is the commission. Um, 5% of 1995 is about a dollar. So it seems to be computing correctly. So I'm uh, it's just sort of spot checking. I could even get out a calculator and manually check a couple of these, but I'm pretty confident that it's working the way I want it to. So we're down to the second to last step. Um, create a report that shows um, all of the fields and sort commission from largest to smallest. And then we want to do some modification to clean up the way the, the form looks in design view. I'm sorry, the report. So I'm going to go to the report wizard. And I am using this employee commissions. So I'm going to pick last name, first name. I don't actually need all of these. Um, so I'm just going to pick order number, ISBN, title, and commission. This adds, asks if I want to add grouping at any le levels. I don't. Um, I could group by employee ID if I wanted to. So that would be something that might make sense. We'll just uh, group by employee ID. Having the last name and first name is a little redundant, but. Um, and then we'll sort by commission. And then we'll click next and just accept the default so we're finished. Give the report a name like employee commissions report. And you can see that it um, that it shows these results. Um, I'm going to go into the layout of this and make some changes. Um, let me see what they ask us to do. Modify the report to center the data and headings and remove spaces from the headings. So in order to do that I need to go into design view And on the page header, I want to put spaces between each of the fields. Only where it has, says headings. And then I also want to center everything. Um, so I'm going to go to home and align center for each of the the headings and each of the fields. So I'm going checking on each of the headings which is in this dotted area. And then in the detail which is actually going to have our data I'm also going to center. Now I can't change, put spaces in here where it says last name and first name because the detail is where they're drawing the data from. These are just labels and headings, so you can change those. Um, the, hold on, I want to undo that. Might need to um, resize this a little bit. So we'll, um, since I've done all the centering, I'm going to close and run again. So I'm closing this and saving. Then I'm going to go ahead and run it again. Notice that this field is getting truncated, this order number. 
So I might do um, a little bit of spacing here and maybe come up with a, an abbreviation for that. So I'm going to go back into design view. And I'm going to make the ISBN just a little bit smaller. Hopefully that doesn't get truncated. And then here I'm going to change this like to order num. It still doesn't fit, so I'll have to move it over a little bit. Maybe make ISBN even smaller. Okay, let's see how that works. I'm going to close and save. And it looks pretty good. The title's getting kind of truncated, but they can see it. I would have to change the layout of this um, form maybe to be a uh, landscape style instead of portrait if I really wanted to show everything correctly or you know, resize all these fields, move everything to the left and get more space for the title. But this actually looks decent, so I'm going to go ahead and close it and go with that. Um, and we're on to the very last step, which is to create a menu that has buttons that opens the form and the report. Um, so for this I'm going to go into create and then this is actually a blank form. It doesn't have a, uh, a wizard to create a menu. But we get some icons up here. So I'm going to press the, the label button to um, just put a heading for it. I'm going to call this employee commissions. Presumably this uh, database would have extra stuff in it for um, accommodating the sales. And then I'm going to have two uh, command buttons here, two buttons. One to open the form, so I went below that. And I'm going to go to form operations and open form. And I'm going to select the employee sales form. And click next. And now I'm going to have uh, some text called uh, enter employee commissions or something. Or enter employee sales data. I don't know and we'll finish it. And then I'm going to add another button to open the report. So report operations, open report, we only have one report, and I want to put some meaningful text in it. Um, show employee commissions. I'm going to um, go to home and center my label. I'm going to resize it a little bit to make it smaller. So now I'll go ahead and close and save and call this menu. So now I want to test it by double clicking on it, making sure it works OK. Um, I'm going to click on the sales data. Um, if I wanted to, I could change something. Let's say Ringo is only supposed to have 2%. Oops, I added an extra decimal. 0.02. Um, I could test my validation rule again. Change this to 0.09. And then I can run the commissions again.
And ideally, you would have some sort of totaling in here as well to show my, how much money you would have to pay them. Um, but just as an example, this is a, a report showing the results, but in formatted. So we close that, and if we wanted this menu to pop up when we entered, uh, this wasn't required in the review, but if we wanted to, we could go to Options, and then under Current Database, we could select that form to open when we entered the, um, when we first opened this file. So anyway, that's, uh, hopefully you learned a little bit that will help you prepare for the uh, skills test in, in Access. Um, don't hesitate to email me if you have any questions. Thank you and good luck.